we're going to record today's session. Um, so they're going to re be recording uh, the, audit the audible portions of it, as well as what we're seeing on the screen. And then they'll open up the view to just the room um, for the question and answer session. And so that's, uh, we're doing that just to ensure that people that can attend the session can access all the same information as everyone else. Um, so just making a, a fair and level playing field for everyone. Um, so we're here to, so bear with me, we, we have to use the microphones and everything for, <laughs> for that. Um, so we're going to talk about the application process for the Boise Visual Chronicle and Portable Works collections. Uh, I'm Carl LeClaire, I'm the Public Art Program Manager. Uh, joining me today is... I'm Katina Fromm, and I'm also with Public Art Program. And so uh, Katina's uh, contact information is out on the call, so if there's um, any follow-up questions or clarifications after today, you can always reach out and we're, we're happy to help. Um, so uh, just a quick agenda for the day. We're just going to kind of walk step by step through the application, um, talk through expectations, how to fill out the application, what uh, what we're looking for, talk about the evaluation process. And this is a great time to just answer, uh, ask questions and, and uh, you know, interface directly with us as opposed to email or phone. Um, so to get started, the, the call, as, I'm sh as I hope you've already navigated to it is located on our website. Um, so if you go to the opportunities section, uh, the calls and opportunities. Uh, this section is where we host all of the, uh, the opportunities that we're offering, um, but also below we have opportunities within the state of Idaho and then other national and regional opportunities for public art or exhibitions. And we try to cater those selections to uh, opportunities that we think are good for, for the local artists. So um, the standard format, uh, you'll see the opportunity listed up here uh, with the deadline, a little bit of information. If you click into the apply now, that'll take you to this landing page for the opportunity. And um, again, this is just standard, kind of standard presentation for all of, all of our projects. We try to, again, just uh, reiterate some of the information here. So at a quick glance, you can identify um, and understand if this is going to be the right opportunity for you to apply for. So deadlines, very important, the budget amount. So for this call, it's a little bit different in that we have, we have a total budget of $24,999 for um, the acquisition of new works. And so this isn't for one artist, um, but we're hoping to collect a, a number of works, just as many as we can within that available budget. And then, so really the opportunity, um, the Boise Visual Chronicle started uh, in 1996. Um, as a partnership with uh, the Capital City Development Corporation, the Center on the Grove, and uh, the Arts Commission at the time. And they were interested in uh, creating a, a documentation of local artists' work that was really celebrating different facets or aspects of life in Boise. And so early on, the directive for the collection was that it had to be local artists and it had to be specifically work about Boise in some, in some respect. And so uh, early on in the, in the years, it was collecting a lot of scenes from Boise. Um, over time, we started collecting a lot, of, uh, a lot of scenes of the Boise Depot and of the river. And we started to kind of loosen the parameters of what we're looking for. So um, we're looking for, I think, local artists that are making, just making work in Boise, not necessarily so specifically tied to uh, specific scenes of Boise, but opening up those parameters to just being able to support the artists that are working here. Um, the po Portable Works Collection has uh, kind of existed uh, predating the Boise Visual Chronicle and was really a loose framework for uh, the Arts Commission to collect um, other interior works. And so it's composed of donated works, uh, works that maybe existed before the time of the Arts Commission within the city's uh, possession. and. Two years ago in 2017 was the first time that we actually um, put out an acquisition call for the Portable Works Collection. And this further allowed us to, to loosen the scope of, of how we're collecting or what we're collecting um, into, the, into our collections. And so the two collections really provide a nice balance for each other. Boise Visual Chronicle still has the aim of really celebrating aspects of life in Boise. And Portable Works, uh, we have representation of a couple international artists, maybe who have served uh, residency terms here um, in various capacities. Um, again, other donated works or other acquired works uh, from the city or, or Idaho-based artists. 
Um, and so the collections to date, we have uh, between the two collections, maybe just over 300 works uh, between the two. And the, they range from uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional works. We actually, for the first time in 2017, acquired uh, three-dimensional works specifically for the collections. And so we've, we're further broadening that scope. And uh, the works get displayed throughout all uh, publicly owned buildings uh, owned by the city. So that includes City Hall, the library branches, City Hall West, the airport. And so it's a great way for us to support and celebrate the artists that are working here, uh, but also provide um, authentic, unique artwork uh, for our municipal spaces. And so uh, we're gonna get into the application now. So we'll click in, and this link will take you into being able to download the application, which uh, you'll need to do to access a couple of the items that are required to be submitted uh, with the application. So once we get in here, the that same information is reiterated again, deadline July 26th, 3 p.m. So it's a very firm deadline. Make sure you get um, everything in. Try to get in before the deadline. Um, so that way we can, we have the opportunity to review and let you know if there's any issues and we are able to allow you to resubmit any of that problematic uh, material as long as it's before that deadline. Um, the opportunities I talked about, um, this time around we put in, um, we put in the statement for uh, cultural equity. Um, our Arts and History Commission uh, supported and included this statement on cultural equity um, as part of our department's practice. And uh, we're looking to just further expand the scope of our collections uh, based on trying to include as many diverse perspectives um, within the art making community here and different perspectives throughout the collection. Um, project information, so this, uh, this information just breaks down that differentiation between the Boyce Visual Chronicle and the Portable Works collections. Uh, we have the anticipated project timeline. So the timeline, again, is there to help help the artist understand if, if you are available and able to meet the, the terms of this particular opportunity. This project, uh, as opposed to some of our other ones, is, is a little bit lighter on uh, you know expectations and involvement. Um, well, essentially, we're here at the first workshop. Um, when, once the applications are received on July 26th, we will compile all the information and then bring it to our selection panel who eventually makes the decision on which items we're going to accession. So a common, um, I think maybe myth or misunderstanding is that Katina and I have the authority to make decisions um, as to what we, what projects we fund or what we accession, but we are simply facilitators of that process. And so each opportunity has a unique set of stakeholders that we compile. Um, so the selection committee is different for every project based on stakeholders. And uh, the core members are the Arts and History Commission. That's a mayoral appointed committee that helps in the decision making process for the department. We then have a Arts and History Advisory Team, which is uh, an ad hoc sort of volunteer group of community members that uh, help us out on special projects and volunteer opportunities. Um, they have a seat on the panel. And then we always have a, at least an arts professional and an artist um, on that panel. So we've built it out a little bit, um, a little more robust. We have a couple of members from each of those, uh, from each of those groups serving on this panel this year. And what we'll do is we take all the application material and we send that out to the selection panel members and they have um, usually at least a couple weeks to review all the materials before they come to the day of the meeting. And Everyone compiles their own notes and essentially scores on the applications. We compile all those scores, create averages, and then create a breakdown of, of how we want to proceed. That serves as a starting point for that discussion at the day of the selection panel. And from there, we just try to work through and discuss um, everyone's different viewpoints and try to come to a consensus um, as to how we're going to proceed with the project. Uh, for this particular one, uh, we'll look specifically at available works that for purchase and given the budget, how many works we can purchase with the available funds we have. And then uh, once, once the selection is made, um, we'll notify the artists 
and then there's a period of time that the artist will have to, to bring the artwork. Um, here, we'll do a, an inspection of the work to ensure that it's consistent with what was presented in the application, and then do a simple purchase agreement um, between the city and the artist. So uh, the application process, this is um, fairly standard language that's included in all of our opportunities and um, just kind of breaks down how to have your questions answered, how to compile all of your application materials and then how to deliver that. Again, contact information for Katina is here. Um, instructions and delivery for this one, um, you can hand deliver, you can mail it, um, or for this one we have the email option. And so just ensure that um, if you're going to email or mail or everything, just make sure that all the contents of your application are included. Um, the last day to answer questions, uh, July 24th, so that's pretty close right up to the deadline. So if there's you know one final thing that you're very concerned about, you, can, you still have time to, to get clarification there. And then uh, the, the evaluation process, I just kind of spoke to the, that selection panel makeup. So this is just a little further iteration on um, about what the evaluation panel will look at and what they're actually going to be basing their scores on. And so the application form is located within this document. Uh, we'll cover that in just a minute. Uh, item number two is the letter of interest. So we get a lot of questions about what, what we should see in the letter of interest. And one thing that I like to place emphasis on is that this is really your opportunity to bring your voice into that selection panel conversation. Um, because you don't have the opportunity to present to that panel, um, this should be, should be the opportunity to tell the panel more about yourself, more about your practice, uh, maybe the significance of some of the works that you're presenting for purchase, if there's any provenance, uh, exhibition history, um, awards that a, a work has received in the past this would be a great area to, to highlight on some of those things. And then again, just kind of humanize your application with your voice there. Um, so it's, it could be, it could go a number of different directions, but you know, be, be, be specific about what you want to say to the panel in this letter. Um, the artist resume, uh, we don't list this as a, as a CV, but if you have a CV, that's great. Um, if you don't have a, a really robust exhibition history, um, that's fine too. Uh, but just try to put together some uh, some representation of your qualifications or your art artistic experience. Um, if that's limited, uh, any job related job experience that you have that um, could build confidence in the panel about your ability to you know show up and bring your work here and sign the contract and just be responsible to. Uh, to dealing with the budget and timeline. Um, so that can be pretty flexible. Uh, for the images, this is really, so as you see, um, the images uh, of the work is what is going to garner the highest value in points. And so this is really what the panel is going to pay, be paying most attention to. And so 100 points uh, total for the, for the portfolio of images that you're submitting. And so you have the opportunity to submit up to 10 images, however, if you don't have 10 images available, then that's fine. If you have maybe two works that are available that you would like to present um, to be purchased, um, then just use those two images. Um, oftentimes we see a really strong body of work, maybe six works, and the artist will kind of throw in you know, four additional works that really aren't as strong as the other ones. And the panel has a very difficult time in navigating that decision because they don't really understand maybe what they're going to get from the artist. And so this opportunity, we are looking just for unframed available works. Um, and documentation and the image quality is extremely important. Uh, when we meet with the panel and when they're reviewing, it's all through a digital platform. And so we, we really encourage artists to have, if you can't uh, competently photograph your work, Try to have it professionally photographed or, or represent your work in the best way that you possibly can. Um, when we meet, we're looking at a, at a screen much like we're viewing up here. And so just think about the quality um, that you're presenting because that's beyond uh, your voice and that letter of interest. And looking at your resume, the, that's all the panel has to work with. So 
when, when we look at images, we have the, the dimensions not to be longer than 10 inches on the longest side and then 300 dpi. Those are specifications that will allow for your work to be well presented in this type of format. Anything larger, anything smaller creates issues um, in terms of viewability and accessibility. And so that's critical that it's that's properly sized. But it's also really important to think about just how you're documenting the work. So just focus strictly on one piece of work per image. And within that image, uh, we'll get to questions in a little bit, um, so if you can hold on. Um, so if it's you want one image represented, and try to, if there's any extraneous information outside of the bounds of the artwork, try to crop that in to just with inside the image area. Uh, make sure that it's well lit, um, so there's not you know shadows cutting across or big glares if you're uh, photographing a painting. Um, that's you know sort of obscuring any part of the image. Furthermore, um, you know don't pose, <laughs> don't pose in front of your artwork or um, have a, an image of your artwork in an exhibition setting. Um, I know sometimes it's it's really enticing to say you know look the work was displayed at. Uh, you know, such and such gallery, but then we have a hard time determining which work you're pointing to and, you know, which work is the one that's available. So really just narrow in and focus on just representing the image in the best and highest quality that you possibly can. Uh, you had a question there? I think um, a lot of the times the cell phone won't take a high enough quality image. Um, it typically, I think the cell phones typically take an image at around 72 dpi, and that creates a very small sort of web file. Um, so if possible, uh, take the images uh, with a real camera, um, and that'll give you more flexibility on the scale and the quality of it. I would keep it just to the artwork. Um, anything extraneous to the artwork will be potentially distracting or confusing. I certainly don't want anybody to be discouraged if they don't have access to a camera. So if you don't have access to a camera and what you're able to use is your phone, um, I think that's okay. We definitely want anyone to participate and not feel hindered or unable to participate just because they don't have a camera or a way to get the work photographed. So if that's the case, that's fine. You can always, um, this is just for everyone in general too, that we want people to reach out to us and let us know if there's some sort of obstacle that's preventing them from applying because we want to make sure people can apply. So if that's what you have, um, just try to do your best to check to make sure that that file is big enough format. I know now smartphones are getting more and more in advance and you can take pretty good quality photos. So just double check that. But if you have any concerns when you're uploading the file, free, feel free to reach out to us. And that way we'll know what you're working with and we can convey that to the selection panel too. Because we really do want it to be an even playing field and not everybody has the money or the access to that kind of technology. So again, we don't want that to be a reason for not applying. So just saying that in general. But um, so you can double check that when you're uploading the files. Yeah, yeah, having all the documents on a thumb drive will be great. And um, if you're putting your images on a thumb drive or uh, onto a CD or getting ready to submit through email, uh, try opening those files onto your computer, um, you know, if possible, and just take a look at the quality of how it turns out. Um, it's very frequent and very unfortunate that we see thumb drives come in or CDs come in that will open it and it doesn't have any information on it. And so if you are uploading to a thumb drive or CD, take it out of your computer, put it back in, make sure that all that information is gonna load up because that's, that's always the worst case scenario. Um, so yeah, I, I think just do your best to represent the work in, in the best possible way that you can in the highest quality um, 
that that's available to you. Um, the final image or the final item that's uh, required is the image list and we've provided that document here. Um, so now I'm going to walk through a couple of those forms. Um, so we have the application form here for you to fill out. Um, you can download this and fill it out by hand and print it out and fill it out by hand and either submit that printed out or you can scan it back in. Um, if you have the ability to, to use a fillable form, you can just fill this out digitally and type everything in. Um, the signature, um, you can sign that by hand. You can also use a digital signature if you're doing it all digital without paper. Um, digital signature will be fine. Um, but it's critical that uh, you must sign the document because that ensures that you're qualifying this application as your own. Um, another reminder here to attach that letter of interest and attach your resume. Um, and just fill out all the information to the best of your ability. Um, if you don't have a website, that's fine. Um, if you don't want to share your phone number, that's fine. Um, but uh, we will need your con some sort of contact information um, if we're going to proceed with selecting your work and, and contacting you. And the image list is provided here. Um, so there's a number of items here that, uh, that are definitely critical, especially for this call. Um, so the, the labeling of your images should correspond with the numbering of the pictures here. And so image number one should correspond, when you label it, should correspond with the information here. This, for this opportunity, this correlation of material is extremely important because we need to know if we are attracted to a work, um, if the selection panel wants to select it, we need to know the dimensions, the materials, and all of that information. Um, so title of the work, uh, if it doesn't have a title, say untitled. Um, dimensions, that's extremely important. Um, we need to understand if this is something that we can reasonably um, take into the collection and, and, and care for. Type of work, um, however you want to label it, uh, if it's photography or you know painting or printmaking. And then the specific materials. The materials will help us um, in the future with any future maintenance or conservation issues. The date finished will also be included on all the information that we present with the work. Um, and then purchase price, this one's different and specific to this opportunity. So we need to be able to know how much each work um, is going to cost as that will help us create that final breakdown of, uh, and threshold of works which we can acquire. The additional information and comments section, um, this is another great opportunity for you to bring your voice into that, into that uh, panel conversation. And so again, if you, know, if you didn't touch on any merits of that, of your particular work within the letter of interest, you can say this work was exhibited at you know, this gallery or won this award at this juried exhibition or anything you want to say here. This is a, another open platform for you to, to bring your voice into that equation. And so there is, uh, there is 10 available slots here, um, but again, you don't, have to, you don't have to have all 10 filled out in order to qualify. If you just have simply one work to submit, then that's fine as well. And then we've just provided a quick checklist here at the end to ensure that you can check off every single one and, and make sure that all of your information is there. Um, so that's um, a quick run through of all the information. Katina, do you have anything to add? Okay, so we will stand for questions. Um, and please take as much time as you think you need to ask questions and we'll, we'll try to find as all the answers we can. So if you don't mind just asking your question into the microphone. Um, just for the purposes of the recording, or actually I'll just repeat the question if that's okay. Yes, so the question was it, the work doesn't necessarily have to present represent anything necessarily from the Treasure Valley. And I think that's correct. Um, we're looking for, for the work that's being made within, within the valley. Um, and so we will make a decision um, when the selection panel puts forward the recommendation, we will then uh, as staff determine the allocation into uh, which collection it goes. So whether it goes to Boys Visual Chronicle or into the Portable Works collection.
so the question was, is there a size restriction for the work? Um, I don't think there's necessarily a restriction for the size. Um, we have acquired some very large works, um, and I don't think that there's anything at this point that would hinder us from looking at scale. Um, as you can see, there's a couple examples around here of some, some pretty large works, uh, three dimensions included. So I think we're, pr we're pretty open to, um, to what's, what you have. So is your question whether you should apply as yourself or as your business? Whether I, no, whether I really, whether you want to consider me as an artist or not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. If, yeah. If, you're, if you're making artwork, then. You're an artist. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, if you, in terms of filling out the application, uh, t that's up to you on how you want to run. If you're going to, yeah, if you're trying to take, uh, you know, uh, the intake of funds through your business, um, then you can include your business information as well on the application. Um, but we'll definitely want your name, though, as the credit for the artist. Is there any um, any communication between the artist and the city about framing or how that work is presented or where that work is presented? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so the question was, does the artist have any say in the framing process and also the display? Um, and yes, the, when, we, when we require the works, we will uh, negotiate with the artists on any recommendations on materials or display method. Um, when it comes to actually where the work is displayed, um, we, on a, on a biannual basis with the acquisition of new works, uh, essentially rotate the collections throughout all the available spaces we have. And so uh, we do, on the first acquisition, try to present all the new works um, here within City Hall on the first and third floor lobbies, as those uh, tend to receive the most traffic and highest visibility. Um, we hope to have kind of a little opening reception with the newly acquired works and invite the artist in to meet with the community, talk about the works. Uh, but then after that, we, we really do reserve the, the right to kind of either display the works or uh, if there's not an available space, we do have a collection or a storage space for the collections. And some works, um, we'll spend a period of time there. Uh, it just depends on that, that rotating schedule and available wall space. How, how often do you guys do this? Or this is the first time we're going to engage you on my work that I've ever heard of this. Like, like do you do it every year? Um, yeah, so the question was, uh, how, how, how frequently do we do this and how long? And so we've... Uh, the, the call, first call went out in 1996, and for a while it was an annual opportunity, um, but uh, we've moved it to a, to a biannual opportunity uh, maybe about 10 years ago. Um, so it is every two years a uh, reoccurring open opportunity. And we keep it, uh, for the, at least for the past few years, we've had uh, the same budget threshold, um, and that allows us to be a little bit more flexible and, and work with the artist through the application process. Absolutely, and uh, so the question was if uh, if you don't get selected this time around, you can you can apply in the future. So you can always apply, you can always reapply. If you already have works in the collection, you can also apply again. Um, and and those decisions again are just made up by that selection committee. And the nice thing about having the selection committee is that that panel makeup changes every time. So it's you're at the very least you're putting your artwork in front of a different audience every time. And uh, each, each panel, um, you know, has its own trends or tendencies and what they're looking for, what they're interested in. Um, we do have, uh, there are works that we have multiple works by single artists. And some panels have taken the stance that, well, the, the artist is creating 
you know, maybe a new body of work or has created maybe a very significant or imper important work. Um, and that could be a decision making factor. Um, or, you know, this is a very prominent artist and we'd like to sort of document um, different movements in their career, different bodies of work throughout their career. Um, yeah, so, so there's lo lots of opportunities. And we always encourage artists that if, you know, if you don't get selected this time around, please apply for the next time because you just, it, the, your chances change and every time. Anything else? Okay. All right, well, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Um, and then just uh, reach out if you have any further questions and get your applications in before the deadline. <laughs>